Hello, uh, my name is uh, Akuji Badat. Assalamu alaikum to everybody. Uh, as you can see with this poster, I'm just initially giving you this poster so that you can see what this video is all about. This video is mainly about uh, our taxi drivers and uh, ha relating to Kirklees. If anybody else wants to join in you know you can see me but i've called a couple of meetings here one is on uh 21st of february uh, 2017 that will be a tuesday and that's at 7 40 p.m at snowden street and a meeting with the bosses of all the kirkley's area uh that will be on uh, a week before exactly a week before on tuesday and that's uh uh, 14th of February 2007 and it's mainly to do with the Uber losing the court case and the ridiculous fares that we are charging currently. So taxi drivers meeting on only one subject which is fares, tariffs, what we charge. Uh, me, my uh, email address is badatakuji at hotmail.com if you want to get back to me. And uh, Um, sorry, our meeting is on, uh, sorry, um, I've just done that, sorry. I, sorry, I keep breaking off, but uh, anyway, the whole point of the meeting that I am calling is I have had a word with the taxi licensing, Kathy Scott, who's our subcommittee chairman. She's just been brought in as a chairman recent chairman of the subcommittee and i've asked her that we should be debating this very very seriously what 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 we should be debating is that uber uber in the gig industry has just lost its case with the courts with the tribunal and this means that we the taxi drivers are not self-employed anymore hum log self-employed abhi nahi hai Right. This means that the Uber has to pay uh, the holiday pay and the minimum hour. The minimum hour is about seven pound fifty, and uh, that's the national living rate. Seven pound fifty an hour. Now, um, the taxi drivers at the moment are getting two fifty an hour. Probably how it works out. If you were a driver for Kirklees Council, uh, you'd probably get about fifteen pound an hour because it's a professional job. It's not an easy job. It's taxi driving, uh, or being a driver of any kind because it uses a lot of calories. You get your back aches, and you know there's all kinds of attach health attachments to it, uh, and people think it's oh nice and cozy job. Plus there's all these cameras and everything. Anyway, the point is, um, log bahut cheap kam karte hai, and the people that's benefiting, right? are those people who are charging rents. Now, for example, if a firm is charging you 78, 80 pound rent, then that 78, 80 pound rent is, you know, landlords, they buy a 100,000 pound property and then they are charging 80 pound rent and they've got several hundred drivers, right? So it's not only this, the gig industry has got to go and it's gone now. And I don't think even if the Uber wants to come back, they are going to win. There's no way they're going to win. Right? I'm going to show you a little clip on here. So basically, we've got to get together. And frankly speaking, I don't mind the, the flexibility. I love flexibility being a taxi driver. I've had loads of opportunities in my career, in my lifetime to have wonderful jobs. But I prefer to be a taxi driver because it suits me as a, as a chairman of a local mosque. And... Uh, uh, and uh, and, you know, prayer times, masjids are accepted. But we've got to set our rate. You cannot say on one hand, oh, you're just renting our radio. And then on the other hand, don't charge this much. Don't do this. Though. So basically when they want, and that, this includes the taxi licensing office as well. When they want, when it suits them, oh, you know, you're self-employed. Go away, sort your own problems out. Otherwise, oh no, you've got to do this and, and it's this policy and that policy. But anyway, these are all by the by things which we're not going to deal with. This is just one subject. I just want to touch on another subject, which is the CCTV ongoing, which you probably saw in my last video. Um, it's I think the closing date for consultation is 2nd of February. And very quickly touching on that uh, CCTV ongoing, 
though we don't want uh, you to protect us if you want the customers to be protected if you want the customers to be protected then you need to fund us you see why should we be funding local people they can do their own recording and you know we can do our own recording or there's plenty of 25 30 quid uh, cameras that we can fit in up but if you want to make it compulsory uh, the five or six authorities have got together and they said well and they will have it their way well i've been advised by my lawyers that they can't make it comp well they shouldn't make it compulsory on you or uh, at least the cost well, let them pay for it if you want to i mean what if customer says oh mr badat was swearing at me and they will have uh, authorization so that from the back seat they can press a button which clicks off the audio right so it's all you know it's too much i mean basically a lot of people don't want their privacy invaded but if you want us to have these systems are you going to pay for it because in, in the end what they'll do because taxi drivers are too quiet you know what i would like is what i would like is kath if you're listening to me both cats call everybody at the town hall or everybody at the town hall, all the taxi drivers, not just the reps. In fact, there isn't any reps. The private hire trade don't have any reps. We've got about 4,000 private hire vehicles and only 250 hackney carriage. And the only person that I see representing the private hire is myself because I run a mosque and a lot of taxi drivers from all grounds come to my mosque. So anyway, let's quickly get rid of it. I'm going to show you this clip, right, so that you know what I'm talking There's so many news that... Uh, that uh, you know, uh, that have. Uh... Right, I want you to watch this. Good afternoon, this is Sky News at three. Uber drivers have won basic workers' rights in a landmark ruling which could threaten the taxi app's rapidly expanding business. The company will now have to pay the minimum wage and offer holiday benefits rather than treat its drivers as self-employed. The decision could affect thousands in the so-called gig economy who work for multiple employers day-to-day -day with no fixed contract. Well, let's go live to central London Sky's technology correspondent. Uh, this is a big decision with far-reaching consequences, Tom. Yeah, this is a huge decision. This is the first case of its kind to be brought in the UK. Others have been brought elsewhere in the USA where Uber settled. But the tribunal today did rule that Uber drivers were workers and not self-employed. And as a result, as you say, should be entitled to workers' rights, including holiday pay, paid holiday, sorry, and the minimum wage as well. Exactly how much they should get will be determined by a later tribunal. Blue. Uh, right, the next up that comes on is the, uh, is the solicitor. He's a very clever man. Okay, and uh, Cheshire, I've been in contact with that firm. We London could get a no win, no fee decisions as well. Drivers, Nigel Mackay from Lee Day. Good afternoon to you, Mr Mackay. So what does this mean for Uber drivers? What it means is that Uber drivers are now entitled to basic workers' rights, such as to receive the minimum wage and to be paid for their holiday in the same way that every other worker is entitled to those rights. So any driver who now wants to join our claim can, can do so and receive... Uh, go on to the next stage where there'll be uh, decisions made about how much back pay they should receive and also to uh, make sure they're paid minimum wage and receive holiday pay going forward. And what about the wider implications, not just for Uber, but for the so-called gig economy? Well, I mean, I think the wider implications are really important because so many of these so-called gig economy companies run on this basis where they label the people who work for them as self-employed, when the reality of the situation is that they're not self-employed at all, but they work for the business. You know, just because you're a technology company and that you communicate with your workers through an app, primarily, doesn't mean that you, you know, that they're self-employed and it doesn't mean that you can deny them basic workers' rights. So I think that any other uh, gig economy company that operates in a similar way will now have to look very carefully at their arrangements to make sure that they're in compliance with UK legislation. That's it. U Uber, though, has said immediately after this decision that it is going to appeal, and as we were hearing from our correspondent Tom Cheshire, they have a history of winning. Well, I mean, before you even decide whether you can appeal, you need to look at a judgment to see if there are any errors of law. This judgment is really emphatic. Um, emphatic. In the way it's set out, in that it found that 
the way that Uber described the situation just doesn't stack up. So I think Uber will have to think long and hard about what they do. I mean, what I would hope they would do is think, hang on a sec, why don't we just pay our drivers minimum wage and ensure they receive paid holiday? You know, what employer wouldn't want its, its workers to receive minimum wage and holiday pay? And I, I think that this question about flexibility, flexibility is a red herring. Nothing in this judgment affects the flexibility situation. Drivers are still able to log on and log off whenever they want. It's just when they're working, they will receive those benefits. But people use Uber because it's a cheap service, don't they? And if Uber's going to have to pay drivers more, well, isn't that going to mean higher prices for consumers? Well, I mean, I, I, I think there's a couple of things there. First, you know, it, it's not just... The only way that Uber can deal with this is not by increasing prices. You know, it can look at the way it deducts commission or, or any other way that it, it, it operates its business. Um, but also, you know, that isn't a defence. A company can't say, well, we can't pay our workers minimum wage and, and pay them for their holiday because otherwise we'd have to put prices up. You know, what other business would expect to be able to do that? It, it's not right that you can hide behind the pricing to deny workers basic rights. Are there workers, though, who say that this suits them, this gig economy, without being considered to be an employee? It suits us, so long as, you know, we've got a reasonable fair card. Them, actually suits them. Well, I mean, as I say, this, this question is not about whether or not you're an employee. It's just to say that you're not self-employed. What we're saying is you're a worker, but that still entitles you to flexibility. You're able to work as you please. Um, the, the, it, nothing in this judgment will change that. And I, I do really think it's a red herring. It's, it's a way of, of presenting the situation that's just not right. And I think there's a real sense of misinformation here. You have to look at the facts on the ground. And the fact is, whether or not these drivers work flexibly and they can carry on doing so, that doesn't mean they should be denied those rights. So if a company is, it has to pay holiday pay, for example, they have to treat a, a, a member, a driver, as an employee, they have to give them certain benefits. Are they not going to expect something more in return? Well, I, I, I mean, you know, you talk to, if you talk to some of our clients, um, these drivers work 50 to 60 hours per week or, or above just to meet their basic living costs. So I think the idea that, you know, they're not already giving something in return is, is um, wrong. The fact is, they are central to Uber's business. So, so to, to say, well, um, you, you know, they're not contributing... Anyway, I'll, I'll show you another clip. ...in a minicab or delivering parcels, for example. For many, the flexibility suits their lifestyle, but it come, can, can come at a price. There's thousands of drivers working for taxi firm Uber, currently classed as self-employed, so they don't get the benefits that people in full-time employment are entitled to, like sick pay or paid holidays. Yesterday, a tribunal ruling changed that Uber says it will fight the decision, but what does it mean for the many thousands of people working this way? We're joined now by Hannah Reid from the TUC, Sam Dimitriou from the Adam Smith Institute. Uh, Hannah, uh, welcome to both of you. Hannah Reid, if you could just explain for us, what do you think of the significance uh, of this ruling yesterday? Well, the, the decision by the Employment Tribunal yesterday is a major step forward in terms of providing better rights for people in insecure employment, particularly for, for those put in false self-employment. But what the case also showed is the dark side of the new gig economy, where employers are ducking out of their basic employment rights responsibilities and individuals are losing out on core rights, such as the right to holiday pay, the right to take rest, ba rest breaks. Yeah, um, you know, so I'm recording again. Anyway, the the point may ye kehna tha, mujhe ye kehna tha ke, you know, some of the taxi bosses, especially those people who's got many cars. I mean, we've got my son works for uh, Amber Cars, and Amber Cars rate is quite reasonable. You know, it's about one fifty an hour. The council has given the Hackney carriage a council controlled meter, which is okay, but you know, it's slightly high because. The, Customers complain, but the customers do eventually get used to, um, you know, paying their way around. Everybody's got to pay their way around, like that solicitor just said. I mean, you know, why should we be always giving half price taxis? That's what currently it's happening throughout the country. And it's mainly the Asian Muslim community that's in it. I mean, you know, I welcome everybody and I have great respect for the Sikh community, the Hindu community, the Christian community. We've even got a few couple of lady drivers now. Welcome aboard. But we've got to work together. The, the fact is, uh, you know, Zakat Johamare, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our Prophet Sallallahu told us to give is only one in 40 pounds. 
one pound in 40 pounds, right? So it's two and a half percent. But here, you know, if from for first mile Hackney carriage, you know, it's not point four and it goes starts going up, you know, to from two fifty minimum to first mile about three fifty. With Hackney, it's two fifty. With private hire, sorry, it's two fifty a mile. And these rates are thirty years old. Man, come on now. Everybody's got to earn a bit of living. And, uh, you know, why should we be always giving, uh, you know, the discounts to the customers? The customers have a right to a cheap transport, like you go in Tesco and you have a value product, which is the bus services. Now, we're cheaper than the bus. You know, anyway, the the advanced bookings, uh, I'll say, talk about that. We're not going to have a domino effect. Oh, boss, log, what they do, they came in the meeting. Oh, Sanata Tayare, Oh, man, ne. So, what they're doing is uh, the domino effect, ke, playing the good cop and the bad cop. You know, I'm all right, but that firm won't. Now, about a couple of years ago, um, thanks to Kader Kapri and Ismail Bhana and the rest, they're all on board with me, by the way, you know, most of the reps. Uh, we called about five, six meetings at Snowden Moss, I called it. And, uh, you know, uh, ultimately, uh, the big boys, uh, I think in, I, I might as well name it, it was Oakwell that didn't come, and Oakwell is the mighty firm around here. So I don't know whether they were playing each other, but most of the bosses were okay on board. They wanted to work together and make one rate. So what we're trying to do is make one union just mainly for the time being for the fares. Now, if if you're trying to say that you're self-employed, we're all partners, Uber's argued all that, he's thrown it out. If you are in your taxi and you are charging the customer your rate, you can do. You know, your boss log, when they tell the customers that, look, this is our fair card, from now on, well, they can't, you know. And you shouldn't be signing any kind of contract. Even if you do, you're entitled to that minimum pay. That's what the court case is all about. So we're not having any domino effect. For the time being, these meetings that I'm calling, uh, where is it? Um, these meetings that I'm calling is... For Kirklees, we want to wrap up in Kirklees. I don't want a firm to say, oh, we're on bother of Calderdale. So if Calderdale agrees, no, no, no. Just Kirklees. First and foremost, Kirklees. Once we've got Kirklees wrapped up, we'll probably, you know, go and ask the other firms to do that and set up an example. So that's what the meeting is about. And I've asked, I, I'm going to also ask Kirklees Council that stop putting a woolly hat over my head. I've got a woolly hat here, look. Stop putting a woolly hat. You're wanting consultations, have a proper consultation. Even on the CCTV, call everybody, all the drivers, and then say, right, drivers, do you agree or do you not agree? Let them put their hands up and then you'll get a proper result. Don't just go put it to the subcommittee. And the subcommittee... Uh, councillors, they've got a right, we have a right over them to make sure that they are on board and they are seen as at the meeting. They, they, they should be, councillors get 13 grand a year, minimum, about approximately 13 grand a year minimum, and they're actually paid to do the job, so do the job right, you know, consult with your councillors and consult with your MPs. We are, honestly, the rates that we're charging, we're charging one pound a mile, right? most firms around here and 250 for first mile so that's basically half less than probably half price approximately half price why should we be you know when you're driving 40 hours 50 hours 60 hours 70 hours you shouldn't be able to work all that and let me just talk about family credit some of your bosses are putting brainwashing the taxi drivers by saying oh you're are you claiming from yes you're entitled to claim family credit there's nothing wrong with it if you were working 40 hours on a national wage you would still be able to claim family credit of whatever they call it working men's tax credit. there's nothing wrong with it it's something that's legal remember there are two issues that i always look at one is islamically right and the second one is in this country, you have to be above Islam, which is the British law. If they allow you, there's nothing wrong with it. But these people, they're always trying to brainwash you and they're charging you 80 quid, approximately, eight, some 80 quid, some 50 quid. But like I work for Batley Cars. Batley Cars has just been taken over by Cooper Cars. Now, Cooper Cars, we only have about 20 cars, <laughs> 20, 25 cars, and five, six, seven, eight of them only work a few hours on weekend anyway. So... You know, these are small fish in a very big pond who will come on board once the big firms come on board. You know, so we've got to work together. I don't mean to disrespect any bosses from the either your Bible bosses or but I will not be intimidated or I'm not scared of you at all. 
my job is to represent drivers, not the bosses. Uh, but, you know, I've got plenty of respect for you. So please come on board on these dates. And we want to talk about it. And if not, then the transport industry, you know, the railway, I've got some great response from the railway industry. And I've also got some good response from the bus company so far as funding is concerned. But so far as application and few cost is concerned, I've also got some good response from possibly no win, no fee. And you may have to pay a lot of compensation uh, to your drivers. But we don't want to go into it. We're all friends. You know, even licensing officers, uh, we sometimes, I mean, you know, the Diwar film, Amitabh Bachchan and Sashi Kapoor, that Sashi Kapoor, he goes into a scene where he's forgotten his guns, there's no backup, and he goes into the hooligans area and he says, right, you're all surrounded uh, by, you know, uh, uh, police and every, you're all surrounded, put your guns down. Really, he hasn't even got a bullet in his pocket. You know, he hasn't even got a gun. So that's what the effect is. Sometimes the bosses are saying, oh, I'll do this. Uh, yeah, you haven't got any bullets. You know, it's the drivers that actually determine the value of your business. So if you've got, say, uh, 200 drivers, 200 times 3,000 pounds each, two threes are six. So your, your, your business is worth half a, over half a million pounds because of a, a driver, you know, so driver counselor. So we're not having any of these domino effects. And uh, the meeting goes on 21st of February, and then a meeting before that. Uh, 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 14th of February at Snowden Street Mosque. Uh, no grudge with anybody. And uh, what we want is only good response. Just a, a fair card. That's the initial thing. So I think I've covered everything, and uh, I hope you forgive me. Uh, I don't I don't want to disrespect anybody, but uh, I don't know whether I can fit this video onto YouTube. But Salaam Alaikum, Khuda Hafiz, Zazakallah, and once again, there.